Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's another fine day here in Kisumu. The weather is fantastic. It rained yesterday. And it is my hope and prayer that this video is going to find you guys in good health. Personally, I'm fine. But I know majority of people around here are gloomy. But we are also appealing to all of them not to destroy any property. Especially the roads. Do not burn tires on the roads. Do not do anything bad. And people are heeding to the calls. And the other information I have for you is that Raila Molodinga and his team are going to go to the courts. And they are going to make two prayers which we we'll look at into and they are going to make two prayers which we will look into probably by the end of the week i also want to thank those who tuned in yesterday for the live show which was so fantastic and i think we are reaching a decision to do it twice every week there are a few things we are going to change but in this video here i want us to do a critical analysis of how William Samoy Arap Ruto, who is the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya, managed to outwit President Ruru Kenyatta and Raila Amunodinga to be declared the president-elect of the Republic of Kenya. If you look at the numbers, William Ruto got 7.1 million votes, Raila Odinga got 6.9 million votes. The difference between them was something to the range of 200,000 votes. If Ray Ludinga had managed, for example, to get only 100,000 votes or 120,000 votes, William Ruto would not have been declared the president-elect of the Republic of Kenya because he would not have reached the threshold. But again, if you look at those results, clearly, they were rigging. And that's not important in politics. Politics, in politics, you must grab leadership. So William Ruto has done that. Hopefully, Ray Ludinga and his team will go to courts and they'll overturn it. But how did he manage to outweigh the two gentlemen? Because William Ruto, as we speak, is a deputy president without portfolio, without any power. Ray Odinga had the backing of President Ru Kenyatta. He had the backing of the deep state. But still at Bomas, we saw William Ruto and his team manning the telling center, how telling was done. We saw William Ruto actually going to IBC chairperson's office, picking him from that office because some DCI had actually barricaded him and brought him. When he was getting in, you could see from the face of Moses Masika Betangula just before he arrived. So a lot of things really took place in Bomas. But he was declared. How did he manage to do that? Before we get into all those details, in case you are watching this channel for the first time, I want you to take a second or two. Click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. And I know most of you guys are asking about the future of this channel. Let me make it very clear to you guys that we are not going to change course of this channel. We are going to proceed the way the channel has always been. I know there's fear that I'm one of the people who are perceived to be critical of William Ruto. I'm not going to change anything. And uh, we are just going to continue analyzing politics the way politics should be analyzed and hopefully I'll be safe. Now let us get back to the main issue. How did William Ruto manage to outweigh Raila and Uhuru combined? How? In my view, William Ruto understood that election is actually a process. And being a process, it means you must plan for it from the beginning till the end. 
William Ruto knew so well that as far as numbers were concerned, there was no way he was going to defeat Raila Odinga. Raila Odinga had the numbers. So William Ruto employed the following strategies. The first one is the NASA collapse of NASA. Of course, and this is the truth, and that's why I begin by letting you know that the difference was around 200,000. You see, Raila Odinga had his NASA coalition intact. He entered into handshake with Uru Kenyatta alone. These guys rebelled. He never made any effort to reconcile with them. William Ruto saw an opportunity. Because William Ruto knew so well that a combination of Raila, Kalonzo, Weta, Mudavadi, and Uru Kenyatta was lethal. There was nothing he was going to do. So he saw an opportunity. And the moment he saw that opportunity, he started plotting on how to split the two. Before we knew, NASA broke and one, one Kenya was formed. One Kenya, and I opined on this platform severally, that one Kenya was actually an idea of William Ruto. He wanted one Kenya initially to just run like that because separating them was also not easy. So when things went the way they went, one Kenya broke. So he managed to pull Mudavadi and Weta. William Ruto's initial plan was also to have Kalonzo Musioka run as a candidate. That was only thwarted last minute by President Rukenyata. So assuming today that Kalonzo Musioka also contested as a presidential candidate, <laughs> yeah, you can take your calculator and calculate the number of votes Raila Odinga got from Kamban. Assuming he contested, he would have received those votes. But it was also not a good idea for Kalonzo to run because Kalonzo running was going to, to engineer a runoff. So he didn't also want Kalonzo to run. So that was the first strategy, the split of NASA, which he did successfully. And of course, I don't blame him. I, li I blame President Ru Kenyatta and I blame Raila Odinga. The second strategy, which he perfected so well, was the polling stations. William Ruto knew so well that for him to be declared the president, he needed to have numbers. And because politics is a game of perception, William Ruto then embarked on creating perception across the country that he was enjoying massive support across the country. In fact, for me, I was shocked when the results came out and the entire country was painted yellow. Apart from that small part, of course, you argue, the argument is that that small part has higher population. But I never imagined that William Ruto was not going to paint the country yellow. So he knew so well that politics are perception. So he created that perception that is very popular. But while he was doing that, William Ruto was identifying polling stations. And because the presidential results are conducted at the polling stations, William Ruto identified these polling stations and how he was going to ensure that at least one million votes are stolen from those polling stations. You remember Raila Odinga at one point stating that these guys had plans of uh, in, of uh, stealing votes, 200 votes, in each of the 10,000 polling stations. So William Ruto identified these polling stations. And that can explain, especially in the mountain, that can explain why despite the fact that the mountain registered the lowest turnout physically, the way Kenyans were voting, at the end of the day, they had the highest voter turnout. <laughs> they had a higher voter turnout because of that scheme. If you look at the IBC results now, the one Chibukati announced, it's actually more than 100%. Why? <laughs> it's more than 100%. If you add, because there's always the, 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 the valid votes, votes cast, the spoiled votes, the, 
which one if you add those they are supposed to tally with the with the Berlin votes but they are not tally and if you go to the mountain and tally some of those votes from the form 34 years most of them are not tallying because of rigging you find a difference of 200 300 200 300 that's how he did this then being a smart guy because the voting was being conducted on the chems kit he resisted any use of the manual register what Relu Dinga and Uhuru Kenyatta had wanted is a case where we were going to have the chems kit you vote there then once you vote then your name is crossed so that at the end of the day someone will come and count you can give the the, the vote for a, i mean the book for a, a particular county i mean polling station then you can count how many people voted what Uto did is that he went to court and last minute court said no manual register okay the court allowed the manual register to be present but no crossing so it means even if you go to court that the votes in Kimskate are not tallying with the votes of uh, or with the with the results announced then someone can argue that those people voted manually and there's no way to verify that they actually crossed their names because that was not a requirement <laughs> so that was his second strategy and for me it worked for him his third strategy which he began long i think in 2013 is the capture of IEBC IBC is actually under the grip of William Ruto. William Ruto understood that for you to be declared the winner, you need to have the CEO of IBC, Marjan Hussein. And then you also needed to have the chairperson on your side. Because the chairperson is the person who is going to announce the result. It's the returning officer. So William Ruto had Wafula Chibukati on his side protecting him in this election the most in, incompetent chairperson of ibc wafulache bukati has been referred to as the hero of this election by william ruto because he declared ruto ruto knew so well that he only needed this he only needed the ceo the ceo was going to help him in uh, with the staff so for example if he wanted to have his it team having access <laughs> to the system he needed the ceo because ceo is the guy running the affairs there so he managed to place his people everywhere recruitment of returning officers everywhere so william Ruto had a parallel system running within ipc that is something which uhuru kenyatta and Raylo Dinga ought to have prevented long ago if they were keen but because they were not keen they underrated ruto what shocked them was what was happening at the bombers of kenya because bombers of kenya actually turned into a scene of crime so that was the third one the, the fourth thing is agents <laughs> you know there's something which i once opined on this platform most people thought it was a joke i opined here clearly that as long as Johnson Sakaja was going to be allowed to run as the governor for Nairobi. I said that. Then Reloringa ought to have forgotten about the presidency. Because Sakaja clearly forged his papers from the Teams University. He forged those papers. But the courts and IBC cleared him. It means tomorrow. Anybody can go to any university as long as they can get accreditation, then they are sorted. Relu Dinga and Uhuru Kenyatta knew so well that this election was all about one thing, protecting the votes. And not just protecting the votes, ensuring that your votes count. If you look at the forms from uh, posted from form 34 is especially from the mountain they were never signed by azimio they were never signed by azimio why because azimio didn't have agents there is nothing which can explain why raido Mododinga got more votes 
in some constituencies in Rift Valley, Kalenjin Nation, than they got in the other side of the mountain. No agents. And in, as long as you don't have agents, there is no way you can protect your votes. Right now, they are looking for, um, they are going to go to court and they need evidence. Where will they get evidence if they didn't have agents? This is a lesson which Ray Lodinga has refused to learn. I was ask, asking someone and he told me that Ray Lodinga believed and believed strongly that President Ruth Kenyatta's party, Jubilee, was going to provide agents. Nothing. And even in his strongholds where agents were recruited, they were never paid. So some of the agents decided to go home a PEMA. <laughs> Number four, his fourth strategy was stronghold strategy. Stronghold strategy. If you look at the turnout in uh, Rift Valley, massive. What about the turnout in uh, Rayo Dinga stronghold? If you look at Kisumu, over 100,000 people never turned up to vote. Almost 200,000. Homa Bay, Homa Bay, how many people never turned up to vote? And because William Ruto knew so well that this election was going to go to the wire, he engineered something through IBC. The postponement of the gubernatorial election in two of Rayo Dinga strongholds. And I did a bit about that. Mombasa and Kakamega. The truth of the matter is that if Abdul Swamad Nasir and Fernandez Baraza were on the ballot on that day, rest assured that they would have managed to increase the turnout. There are people who would have gone to vote for them. But not necessarily presidential. They were going to vote for, the, for him. So the moment they were not on the ballot, these people never turned out to vote. Because they didn't see the need. But if they had turned out to vote, majority of them would have voted for Elodinga. That can explain the low turnout in uh, Mombasa and in Kakamega. For those who were willing to vote for Ruto in Mombasa, I can guarantee you, those people turned out whether they would have turned up, whether Hassan Omar or whether Malala was going to be on the ballot or not. The people affected were Raila Odinga votes. I don't know what you think. But his last strategy was the declaration strategy. You see, once you are declared the president, you are declared the winner, you become the president-elect. <laughs> That's actually what William Ruto wanted. That let's have all this drama, let everything happen, but ultimately I'm going to be declared the, the winner. Once he's declared the winner, he now deals with the situation. Assuming Ray Odinga was declared the winner yesterday, do you think William Ruto would have managed to, even, uh, even if he went to court to win the court, do you think he would have managed now to deal with Raila? Because Raila would have become the president-elect. That's what the deputy president didn't want. So the declaration, the declaration strategy was simple. Have Wafula Chibukati on my pocket. Wafula Chibukati went and declared Ruto with results which he himself knows where they came from. Raila Odinga's chief agent, who, is, who was supposed to sign those, those results, stated on TV that they, they, they even don't know what Wafula Chibukati was going to declare. So he knew that for me to be declared, I needed the chairperson on my side. And the question which most Kenyans are now asking is, do we go and change that law that requires that IBC chairperson become the returning officer? Because assuming, for example, that Wafula Chebukati was working with this for the state or just independent and said, I'm not going to declare results. <laughs> what would have happened? You know, so we are giving the chairperson so much power that he can decide now not even to announce results. Of course, he announced Ruto, but in a situation where he will refuse, where the returning officer will refuse to announce the results, what will happen? Nothing. I don't know what you think, but that's my take. Thank you, guys. Until next time, this is Lee McQueen. Bye-bye.